welcome back to the gentleman's gazette in our live stream today i'll answer all your questions about leather leather goods apparently small leather goods and as you can see here on my table i brought a lot of stuff so i could kind of show not just tell when you ask some questions um first up uh general ama questions here ask me anything can a video be done on the costumes in the 1981 Brightside Revisited adaptation? So obviously not about leather. You know, we found that doing videos on, you know, even iconic movies like American Psycho, it just doesn't have that much of a draw. And typically these videos are quite a bit of kind of time intensive because you have to go watch the video, you know, stop, analyze the outfit and move on. So Brightside Revisited is cool, um, maybe one day but it's not on our priority list. Um, Sam, have you considered a video about vacation cruises? You know, I've actually cruised quite a bit. My wife's family had been cruising for even a longer uh, amount of time. So I would say in, in recent years, cruises, you know, in general, have gone downhill in terms of dressing. It's much more casual, you know, which for most people doesn't mean elegant in any way. So yes, we could do that, and there's some lines like Cunard, you know, which are a little formal still, and that people dress up, they're more British. But uh, again, not a high priority thing for us. Um, yeah, um, you probably noticed we added some wallets recently. We started with a card holder, <coughs> which is a small item where you could put in cards just like here, for example. This is not one of ours. This was a prototype that we did, and we just wanted to see how different shapes worked. And, you know, when we do that, we we make a lot of items just to see how does it work. For example, here we're like, well, let's do some folded edges with a cool curve. But then we realized, you know, if you do that, <clears throat> you have to split the edges in the back, and it actually doesn't look at all is it, it doesn't last very long right so you just have to do um, things differently and you know leather is not always leather right here for example this is a much cheaper leather just when you touch it and even you hear the sound it feels different than something like this it's stiffer and um, yeah we can talk about the workmanship and, and all that stuff but um, when it comes to leather, there's huge difference between the quality, between the price, and uh, the design that goes into it. So today, we're also launching our new, we call them 8-card and 10-card wallets. And we got them in five colors each. Um, one, you know, is with 8-card uh, slots, the other with 10. And at first, they may seem, you know, very generic but once you take a look at the details you'll see there is a lot more to them than to regular wallets first of all you know we have these like double folded edges most most other wallets if they're folded at all many are just you know cut with a cheaply kind of uh, painted edge they're folded once we fold them twice so it's just more durable and there's also more skill involved to get it all kind of look neat and uniform because you have to kind of sky the edge at a nice angle. Um, then if you compare our wallet to kind of a, a more standard one, so most standard wallets, right, they will have a lining on this side on the inside, they will have a lining divider, and then often they put a little letter strip on top just so you get a uh, yeah, something, and you have another piece of lining in the back. So this was kind of a, uh, you know, during the prototype stages, we, we tried all the different things and what we liked, but we just didn't like the sound of the material, you know, like that. It just didn't feel good. So what we decided to do is we added leather all over the place. So we got layer here, we got a layer here, uh, and look at that, another layer here, another layer here. So as you can see, this wallet, you know, will consume about two and a half to three times as much leather as this wallet. Um, not immediately obvious, right? But uh, we do this because we believe that it, it 
results in a better product. And we were able to really split it so thin that it doesn't add much bulk, but uh, you get this advantage of having it be all leather, so to speak. And uh, to yeah celebrate uh, the launch of these wallets, we came up with a deal. Last time, you know, we did like, you get a certain percent off. I think it was 20%. This time we said, okay, when you have a bigger wallet, an 8cc or 10cc, you sometimes wish you had something with fewer parts because when you travel or you go to a concert, you want it to be like very unobtrusive. So big wallet is not always your friend. So we're like, okay, if you buy one of those during the next week until next Monday, April 1st, you can pick one of our 4cc wallets, which is our little card holder, and you can pick any color you want, and it's for free. So either you, you know, give it as a gift or you keep it for the situations when you want to have a little bit of variety. Um, in order to get this deal, which is a really good deal, um, use the code FREEWALLET125. It basically saves you $125, which, you know, considering the new wallets are between 255 and I think 305, depending on the leather and size, you're, you're getting a good um, deal add-on here. That being said, um, let's look at a few more questions here. Um, what's the most interesting vintage clothing item you've purchased recently? Um, I bought a nice white striped uh, Polo Ralph Lauren cardigan and it's really heavy, made out of nice wool with some leather football buttons. So I, I like that a lot. Um, nice tie, Raphael. Where is it from? Um, it says L. Johnson Clothier, Minneapolis, Edina. I probably found this at an estate sale locally because I am here in Minneapolis and you know this is a clothier that has not been around since I lived here so it must have been quite old. Um, yeah, in terms of leather, you know, how how can you have different leathers and how can you tell that leathers are different sometimes, right? So for example, here, if you look at this leather, right? This leather is what it would be called kind of a, a, a debossed leather. So you take like, think of it like a metal stamp and you print this kind of pattern on top of it. If you look at this leather, for example, this is our black Togo leather. It, um, at first glance, you know, it looks like a grained leather and you'd think, oh, this is exactly the same thing. This is what happened here. But upon closer notice, you see the scales are actually different on the inside and on the outside because this is a naturally shrunken calf. So this is not debossed or printed on it. It's just the way it's tanned, it shrinks together and this is all the natural grain of the skin. Now, when we cut the wallets, we, we try to, you know, put um, a leather of a similar size in areas that are visual so it looks neat and uniform, but if you look on the inside, for example, you can see the scales are, are larger. So that's how you can tell that this product is of a higher quality because in order to do this, you need much better raw skins than if they are just embossed. Now, most people don't know about these differences, but how, you know, how does it show? Well, you get basically a unique item with every kind of wallet you have. No one else will have a pattern exactly like yours. And that's some, you know, brands like, for example, Hermes use that too, um, to just show um, how they're different and that they use a more quality product that cannot be made from like cheaper skins. Um, do you stock trifold wallets? Um, we do not. I've um, experimented with them and you know basically trifold means I mean this is a bifold right because you have one thing one here a trifold would be another compartment that you could flap this way or this way basically and uh, some people like them I always think that these wallets already can get quite thick once you fill them up with cards so adding another layer of fabric or material plus that just makes for a really fat wallet which 
I don't like in a in a jacket pocket. I want it to be as slim as possible, but still made out of nice materials. And then you know it's when it comes to materials, right? You look at little things like, oh, what is the corner radius like? You know, because when you put something in your pocket, you don't want something that's too pointy because it, sometimes it could catch. And then it's also the size, right? How wide is something so it can easily fit into a pocket? Like, is it designed that you can use it in, in a smart way? And you know, at first, when you look at our wallets, you're not gonna see much difference. But then you compare it to, to other wallets. For example, here, right? This was a prototype that we made. And initially we thought like, well, what about if we do the slits this way? right, with a cut edge. And then we realized if we do it this way, you get, you know, one, two, three, four card slots, one, two, three, four card slots, but the overall thickness of the wallet is quite different and it's substantial. And it doesn't look like much, it's maybe a centimeter, you know, or like less than half of an inch, but when you actually have it in your pocket, the way it feels is hugely different. You know, this goes in very easily and stays in there and you don't see it much. This one here is just much chunkier, especially if you carry the wallet back here. You know, it's much harder to get it in and out versus something smaller like this goes in much more neatly. So we're like, yes, we, we, we want that. So then the question is, how do we get there, right? It's easier to say, oh, we want a slimmer wallet. So the first thing that you can do is you can change the distance of the card slots. For example, here, you can see up here, we changed, or we do it left and right, maybe that's easier. We change the distance of the card slots where here, they're much slimmer than here. Cool, when we do that, you already save a little bit of, of height. Then we were like, well, actually, if we go back to this design with a folded edges, we can get a folded edge, which is higher quality, will last longer, and we can slim it down. And then the next step, we, we looked at, you know, different, we looked at the wallet and we used like, you know, money and we put it in and we're like, okay, what height do we really need for bills compared to this? So if you look at most wallets like, like so, they have this divider in the middle and the divider is on top. And so you have this kind of trifecta, one layer, second layer, third layer. We were like, well, what if we had this layer in the middle lowered? So from the front, you wouldn't see it. And we were like, it's still super functional. You can get to your builds. There's no functional issue. But by lowering it, we were able to just lower it even more, which is exactly what we wanted, right? So it's like you go through iterations and that's not something that you see when you buy a wallet necessarily, but we thought about all that stuff because we did not want to change the spacing here because if you do that with your cards, it gets harder to pull them out if the distances between the slots is too small. Then it's hard to grab the card versus here, you can easily grab the card, get it out, but you get overall a slimmer wallet. So that's some product design that is maybe not obvious from the get-go. Um, how have your wallets been influenced by classic style? Um, well, if you look at them right overall, there's not, again, at first glance, it seems like any other wallet, but only when you know the details, you know, oh, that's, that's different. You know, one thing we did was we went with a contrast stitching, which you may say, oh, nice. But if you use a contrast thread, every imperfection, becomes so much more visible. And uh, so you need really skilled artisans or you have a lot of B quality stuff that you that you can't sell. Um, the leathers, we spend a lot of time on the leathers, trying to get something that, you know, has that real nice touch and feel. It smells like real leather and it, you know, it gets this patina, you scratch it and you can kind of buff it out as you as you wear it and and each wallet um will be you know will become 
yeah, unique over time. So for example, this is one that, you know, I've been wearing for a little while just to test things. This is what kind of the new one looks like, you know? So you can see maybe the, the edges are a little darker, right? You see a little scuff maybe where it fell down or I hit something. But um, we also wanted to make sure, you know, that the leather stays in good shape. And really the hardest way for a bifold wall like this is carrying it in your back pocket, you know, sitting on it when you drive or in chairs. That really is the hardest way you can, you can test a wallet, so to speak. And um, yeah, little things, you know, corner radiuses, uh, functionality, but the rest is kind of a classic design that has been around for a long time. There's nothing special we did, you know, and we, we, we've done different things like saying, oh, what can we do here, you know, where you have basically cut in round slots, so to speak. But if you look at our wallet, you know, these are all individual leather pieces that are then folded this way, folded around. So it makes for something that is just really uh, hard wearing and uh, will last a lot of time. About how long do you expect new wallets to last if carried every day? You know, frankly, when you have a quality product, it, it's, it's hard to tell. For example, this one here was our very first prototype, and that was with a different uh, manufacturer. Originally, we made those in, in Germany, and the, the manufacturer is, 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 is okay. They, they do good stuff, but they're just not very organized. And, you know, for example, the inside layer here was just one layer of leather with the backside being exposed. Well, what we do now is two layers on each side, you know, and it's actually thinner than, than this one here. So the, the whole stitching, you know, the neatness of the wallet is, is higher end with our new manufacturer. And uh, also the ability, the way they're organized is just so much better that the consistency in the output, you know, with the old manufacturer, sometimes we'd, we'd get stuff like this, you know, where all of a sudden they would put this kind of artificial material in there, which is not at all leather, right? So, you know, you, you reorder a batch and they do stuff like that. And uh, th the cutting just wasn't as neat. And so we just decided it was time to use a new manufacturer that could bring our vision to life in a way that makes sense. And our previous vendor, you know, the, the, the manufacturer was still good, but stuff like this is something that, you know, means your entire batch of ordered wallets is useless because they did a mistake like that. Um, how long can it last? Well, this one here lasted, you know, I don't know, we, we started the shop in like 2013, so probably this is 10 years old, you know, haven't worn it through. Um, it also depends a bit on how hard you wear your stuff, you know, if you're like, I don't know, falling off your bike, you know, and it goes through your pants, yeah, this is, this is hard to wear, but under normal circumstances, I don't see where you'd wear it out because everything is proper, um, proper leather. The only area where there's no leather is in, be in between the credit card slots. We tried a, a prototype with it. It just got too chunky and too thick. So we used, it's a special for Belvedere Green Moiré that was made for us. It's, it's very stable, very durable, extremely thin. So it's also a well thought through material. It's not anything like cheap polyester. Um, so that's what we decided to do. But I, again, I don't see how you would um, wear this out. I would hope, you know, that you can keep it for like 20 years, um, maybe longer. Um, it also depends on, on the climate you're in because when leather is in a really dry climate and, you know, you don't use anything to moisturize it, it can like die. Most areas, it doesn't matter so much. And on the flip side, if you are in a very humid climate, you know, and you don't, you put it in a space where it's just warm and wet, you may get mold, but that's due to the fact of storage, right? It's nothing that the wallet inherently is, is to, to, to blame about. Um, hi, Rafael. I have a leather hat. How can I maintain it? Greetings from Peru. 
You know, with leather, there is a big difference in in how it's how it's made, and and what it yeah what it's kind of made of. You know, you have leathers where they're aniline dyed, meaning the leather is dyed in one color all the way through. Then you can top coat it. Then you can have you know an aniline color in, in a lighter color, and you put darker things on top, so you get effects like this where you scratch and you see something through. So not all leathers react in the exact same way. To so I'd need more information um, about the hat. There's you know more aggressive products like you know Renomat that sometimes can kind of take off a top layer. So if you can, you know, try to do it in an area where it's more inconspicuous and you can't see it. Um, and use a, a gentler product, not something that's super aggressive. And I'd say most people overdo it in their maintenance, right? And they're like, oh, I need to add more stuff. Like, you know, every time I bring my shoes outside, I have to polish them. No, that's, that's not the case. Um, you know, like with a leather wallet, I would say, Probably if you know, I never did anything to this leather in 10 years and it's still fine. It's more like you look at it and you see, oh, there are areas like here, you know, it's quite warm. Or like, okay, I could probably put a little bit on the edges here because they're looking a bit more rough. Cool. But there's not like a hard and fast cooking recipe where it's like, oh, leather hats, no, maintain once a year with this material. No. Do I have to match my wallet to other leather elements of my outfit? No, no, you don't. And imagine how annoying it would be like every time, you know, oh, I'm, I'm having this wallet and now I have to take out all of my cards, all of my belongings, you know, each and every one of them, all of my receipts, all of my insurance cards and put it in a new wallet. That seems like a lot of work. I do that when I travel or I go to a concert where I want this smaller wallet. But otherwise, I'd say no, get something that, that works for you. Can you do that? Absolutely. Now, one thing that we kind of, keep in mind here is that, you know, you notice we had the smaller card holders, then we had the 8cc wallets, now the 10cc wallets, we have a whole range of other products. And our goal is that we create a series, right? So you can get the same leather in different items from small leather goods all the way to bigger ones. And then ideally, you know, the smaller ones you can put in the big ones and there's designated places for it. Now, something like that, you know, requires a lot of money to build out all these products, but that's, um, yeah, we're in this for the long run. And, um, you know, I can show you some, some uh, you know, we've got some prototypes here, for example, you know, this is the same leather, right? We have a prototype of, these are pen holders, you know? So these are all different, you know, different shapes and, and what we do, but it's it's the same leather. Or then, you know, we, we do like something like a, a watch case you know, and, and what does that look like? How do we keep it? And how do we do it on the edges, right? And for example, the, the, the pen holder, you know, you can do a magnet closure, which is super elegant. On a watch, you don't want a, ma on a watch case, you don't want a magnet on like a mechanical or automatic watch because it screws things up, right? So you just have to purposefully design it. But again, the leathers will keep and just create different things. So you will, you can basically you know, buy one item and then buy another one later on and basically create a collection where you have all the same color and uh, enjoy it. Or you're like, you know, I like different colors, so I get different ones, whatever floats your boat. Um, why is there no option with a change purse? Do these fit euros or other coins? You know, when I grew up in, in Germany, I always had a wallet with kind of a change purse. Once I moved to the US, you know, you just don't carry coins so much in your wallet simply because, you know, the really the largest coin in, in everyday use is a 25 cent coin, which doesn't buy you very much. Um, in, in Europe, you know, you have the two euro coin, um, you know, and you can get higher coins like for collectors, but people don't wear them in everyday life. And so if there's enough demand, we could add one with a coin purse. It's just not something that is in high demand in the US. So if, if that's something that you really want, you know, leave some comments, let us know that this is something you're interested in. It, it can be added easily. Um, what are the different types of leathers commonly used in classic menswear? Well, you know, it depends. There's like box calf leather, you know, a black box calf leather shoe 
is is a very common thing. So box calf is you know it has a very fine structure. It's a smaller animal than a, a bull or a cow. Um, is therefore more expensive. Then there are things like you know you can get like a, a bridle leather, which was used you know for uh, the bridle of a horse, right? So the the primary goal was for it to be very stable and durable. These letters are often a bit more casual. For example, you know, we have a belt here, j just to show you. This is a calf leather, right? So very fine pores. Um, and then here, this is kind of a cowhide leather, and it's just very different. It has this kind of pull-up effect, you know, it changes the color a little bit. And you can't say that this is right or wrong, right? It's just different purposes. This is a more sleek, elegant option. This is a more casual option. So if I wear a pair of jeans, you know, I'd, I'd go with this. With this outfit, I could probably wear both, right, depending on the color. But I, I think if you want a classic wardrobe, that means you have more of a complete wardrobe, so you can be dressed in different situations, right? You can wear something with your tuxedo, right? There you have more patent leather in black. You can wear something with a pair of maybe chinos, you can wear something with a suit, you can wear something with corduroys, you can wear something with seersucker, with your wool suit, your, your, you know, your worsted suit, your flannel suit, and so forth. These are all different letters. I personally think um, grained leathers are really nice. Um, I think suede um, is, is a really cool leather that, that should be in a, a gentleman's wardrobe. Box calf, I think um, woven leather is a really cool casual look. Um, also, you know, you could think with things like exotic leather, right? You could, like an alligator, for example, it's definitely different and, uh, but they're more durable than, than people think. They always think, you know, like, oh, alligator is kind of a, a weak leather. It's not, it's really strong leather. And, uh, yeah, th these are good things to have. Sometimes, you know, people are like, oh, I want ostrich leather or, you know, gazelle leather or... Uh, lizard, um, elephant, you know, extremely tough leather. So, um, yeah, you, you have to decide if this is something for you. Typically, I would say, you no. Know, when people try to save on money, they start using non-leather materials like canvas. Um, less durable, not nearly as nice in a touch, but better than stuff like, you know, vegan leather. That's the leather, I, I mean, we tested it, but ultimately what you're buying is plastic. So sooner or later, and more sooner than later, it will end up in a landfill because it just doesn't stand up to everyday wear. You know, it doesn't age like leather. And we, we tested it, we did a whole video about it and you can check it out. But I would say stay clear of vegan leather, at least at this stage. Um, I looked at a report where someone tried to do leather, you know, in like a Petri dish, like chemically. If we get there, that could be amazing because you'd get exactly what you'd want, you know, you wouldn't need any animals. But at this stage, it hasn't happened. It's just an idea. So we'll see where that will lead. Um, what are some essential leather items every man should have? Well, I think, you know, wallets, belts, um, a, a, a dop kit is really nice. Or, you know, something like leather, um, it can be like briefcases or like laptop cases. It depends a bit on, you know, what you use it for. I think a leather duffel bag is, is very nice. Um, leather luggage, you know, for, for check-in, the issue can be that it gets quite heavy. And so, you know, you can maybe if your allowance is 50 pounds and 23 kilograms and then your suitcase weighs half of that or more, there's not much room to pack. So I don't think it's, it's ideal for that. Um, shoes you know you can have like pen cases cigar cases if you if you smoke it you can have things like you know iphone cases right um uh, i like a leather um a leather case on a phone this is ostrich i think um i just tested it but you know that's the thing right it's this was an item that was had kind of this very thick edge treatment and you can see it's just glued on but after a while I had this for a few months you 
get you know the top comes off now you see the exposed edge which is just glued on and it's not a good quality product that would never happen if we had folded the edges like on a Ford Belvedere product right but um, yeah with you know with with phone cases that the trick there is too that when a new phone comes out you know a lot of people buy those cases and if you want to have them ready when a new phone hits you have to have access to the dummy and you have to trust that this dummy is actually going to be the new iPhone because if it's not you have all these cases and you can all throw them and put them in the landfill because they're not going to fit the phone so it's a it's a tricky endeavor but I, I'd love to create a, a phone case that, you know, was well thought through, maybe with an attachable wallet and stuff like that. So stay tuned, see if we can, if we can do that. But, um, yeah, I think if you are into watches, you know, having a travel pouch that you can bring your watches in is, is a great idea. I think if you have, like, a desk at home, you know, having, like, a desk mat, it can really upgrade the look um, if you like to kind of grill or shine your shoes, having like a leather kind of apron could be really cool. So ultimately, leather is such a versatile product. There is so much you can use it for and, ma you know, make things out of. I, I think it's hard to just limit it to a few things. Um, what do you think of Safiano leather? Um, Safiano leather, if you haven't heard of it, it's kind of like... It looks a bit like like this here, right? It's an Im like debossed leather. Like you take a stamp and you put things on it. It greatly depends on how the leather is made. You know, it, it, it was something I think like Louis Vuitton used it and some higher end makers. And then you know, there's obviously cheaper knockoffs. And so all the same things like regular leather. But is it aniline dyed or not? Right? Is it is it the raw? Uh, it, it's never the raw leather material because no leather looks like that, so it's always going to be embossed. But is the leather treated? You know, is it sanded? Is it a split leather? So with leather, you know, you have it's the skin of an animal, and there's different layers, and the, these layers have different densities. And so what you can do is you can cut the layer if it's this thickness, you can cut it apart, and you take the bottom layer and you sand it a little bit, and you get a suede, and then you have the top layer which you can sell too. So out of one hide or skin you can make two right so the top layer is more valuable than the bottom layer it's a better quality so you know what is your safiano leather made from so to speak but I, I like the look of it and i think functionally you know for example for a belt it makes sense to have a leather that is already pre-marked so when you know this is the inside of your belt it won't form any additional wrinkles because the wrinkle is already there. If you use a letter like this and you fold it for long, longer periods of time, you know, you will see naturally forming wrinkles. So I, I think that's what it's good for. And if you like the look, I mean, go for it. You know, I've we've experimented with something like that here. You know, we were like, we wanted an effect where the top was darker. It's called the um, the peak and the valley lighter um but then you know we, we we made a prototype out of it and we realized this tannery is not good for that leather you know it just didn't look good it looked very kind of i don't know cheap to me even though the leather wasn't cheap at all but you know it looked and feel feel or felt cheap and i'm like why make an expensive item that feels cheap it's just no point in that um, what's your, your opinion of coat wallets and long wallets? When will a coat wallet from Fort Belvedere be available? I think it can be a, a, a really good thing. and uh, we, We've looked at different coat wallets. Uh, first of all, you know, you put in your cards typically in the long way rather than like this way, which means, you know, in a, in a coat or overcoat, you can put it in and the, the bulk is distributed up and down. So, yeah, I, I can see us doing one in the future where um, uh, you know we're experimenting with other things like a passport holder which is similar but has to be a little wider because it has to accommodate you know at least one or two passports sometimes three so it's I, I think it's a valid item especially like here you know you can see it's spaced much further apart so if you have these different cards 
Let's put the next one in here. Oh, see here, this was a poorly designed thing because you put it in here and the card sticks out. Garbage. Um, but like here, you can see the the three cards are spread out more like this. So it it's not as bulky as maybe something if you stack them very close to each other. So I think that's what a coat wallet can be really nice for. It has this kind of vintage feel. So if you're like a vintage gentleman, coat wallets are kind of the thing to kind of set you apart. They're not always super handy because what do, you, what do you do if you don't wear a coat or a jacket, right? Let's say you wear a cardigan or a polo shirt and it's too hot. Yeah, hard to, hard to do. Uh, by the way, we're launching our eighth card and 10 card bifold wallets today, uh, five colors each. If you um, buy them today up until April 1st, you get this one-time chance deal that will never come again. You get a, a 4cc cardholder wallet. These are our cardholder wallets. And if you click through the link on the website in our new section, I try to put, you know, the black 10 card wallet, black eight card wallet, and then cardholder 4cc wallet all next to each other so you can see them. And you don't have to buy the same color. You can pick whatever you want. Just, you know, add the wallet that you want and you'll pay for that and then add the cardholder that you want at the code free wallet 125 and you get the card holder for free. If you don't want the card holder, it's a great gift. I personally think it's great to have it as a backup because then you can, if you need to go to a concert or you travel and you want something that's less conspicuous and slimmer, you can just do that. It can be kind of a, a quick thing or you can have your cards, you know, separated. So this is your wallet when you go out and you know, if someone robs you or mugs you, you you're still fine. But whatever it is, it, it can be good to have multiple uh, wallets. What's the best way to restore cracked leather bags? It depends a bit on how bad the crack is, right? If it's cracked in a way where it's almost like a hole already, that's hard to fix. Um, there are some specialists, what they do is, you know, they will maybe put leather underneath, they try to fill it. But if it's cracked, I would say, your leather needs some love, like a, a leather, you know, a moisturizer. There's products like, you know, Renovateur from Zafir or uh, Boot Black has others, I think, overall. Um, stay tuned for a video on the best kind of leather polish. Um, we, we, did, we did one about that, so we can share more in that. But, um, yeah, there's also other products like, you know, leather oils. I'd be careful with that. That's typically something I'd only use for like sole leathers. On a leather bag, sometimes when you have the bag and you can just feel like it's really old, for example, with a crocodile or alligator, right? The scales will come up and it depends on what scales were used for the leather. Sometimes you just get that scale and it, it's hard. There's nothing really you can do. But there are specialized sources, especially for purses, that try to do things really well. I'd always look at it first because sometimes they just put on a color coating that then will, you know, quickly come off. If it's cracked, that just means your letter is dry and it needs some some moisture, right, through a moisturizer. So don't just make it wet because when it dries, it will feel hard again. Get a product that will kind of recondition, soften and nourish the leather. What's the best and safest way to get wrinkles out of the suede jacket. Oh, suede, suede is hard because if you have wrinkles in regular leather, what you can actually do, you can use an iron at a low heat setting and iron wrinkles out of it, for example, on, on a shoe, right? Got to be careful uh, the, with the heat level. You don't you want it to be really low in heat, and maybe we can make a video about that so you, you know how to do it and how not to do it. Because the heat with waxes, right? If you have a waxy leather, that can create issues. With suede, it's very similar. Suede is the kind of nappy texture that you typically have, you know, at, it's, it's kind of like a texture like this. It's the back of a skin or a hide. And when you take an iron here, you know, it may change the look of the texture. I would still try it probably if you're so unhappy with it that you're like, I'm not gonna wear it, right? then you have nothing to lose. You, you can try to take an iron at a low heat setting, uh, you know, put something underneath like a, 
a pillow or a block like you, you would on an iron, like an ironing board. And then gently, um, you could first try with, you know, a, a piece of cotton in between. So the iron doesn't touch the surface of the leather directly and iron a little bit and see what what that does. I le Leather, you know, it's a skin you, you can get wrinkles out. For example, in the shoe area, I know where usually wrinkles because you're when you walk in that area, you typically get the wrinkles. You can iron there and get it out. Is an alligator leather wallet worth it? It's a very personal decision. Um, alligator, you know, we did a whole video on why it's so expensive. It's a highly regulated good, right? You have the CETA certification and, for example, you know, if we wanted to ship one alligator wallet to Europe, just filling out all the paperwork, doing all the stuff, you know, it would cost like close to $2,000. It costs the same amount if you send like 500 wallets. So, you know, you have to be careful as, as a business owner with that kind of stuff because it may look nice, but you can only sell it in the U.S. Now, alligators, you know, we have a lot of alligators in the U.S. that are farmed, they're very controlled, they're harvested in a kind of sustainable way. So um, if you buy, you know, a, a alligator wallet made in the U.S. from U.S. raw skins, and based on the CETUS number, you know exactly where it came from. Um, I think it's it's nice. I like alligator. And I think there's, you know, Nile crocodiles sometimes, which are larger, so you can make a larger goods out of it. Um, I, I I think I like it. It's more, if you look at an alligator skin, and uh, we have some, but uh, I'd have to walk over and grab some. Um, maybe um, someone here can go get it for me. <laughs> it's uh, in a box. But they have different scales, so it depends on where you cut it from. Kind of the, the core pieces are the belly. Um, I, I think it's in the, in the office, Chris. Um, yeah, but um, how do you make, okay, could you please say more about the radio frequency? I'm not sure I've seen that in a leather wallet before. Yes, RFID, right? It's the radio frequency identification blocking. It's the idea that right now people will, you know, have scanners and they'll try to scan the information of your card. And it's just the technology that, you know, is more in demand because, you know, all your passports, for example, have the digital thing that can be read out even when you're not there. And people are afraid that their data is being stolen. So what we did was in our wallets, we added a slim layer of an RFID blocking material from a company specialized in that. So we added it here and we added it like in the front here, right? So this layer and this layer around has this RFID blocking. So if you have it in your pocket, it should block that. So that's um, wh what we added. I think it's something that I've seen in more and more wallets recently because people are more concerned about their data and security. So yes, all the Fort Bevelier wallets and the card holders have a thin layer of RFID blocking material in it. Um, do you plan on making a wallet using shell cordovan? You know, we, we, we've looked into it. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of cordovan. I don't like the way it wrinkles and the way it stretches. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, gra it's great for like a ready-to-wear shoe, for example, because a ready-to-wear shoe, you know, is made on a standard last, so you put your foot in and it stretches and conforms to your foot. It's not as good on a bespoke shoe because the bespoke shoe is made exactly for your foot, then you use a cordovan leather, now it stretches, now it's too big, right? For a wallet, it wears, it's, it's being worn in a very hard way. And um, so it's it's um, challenging. I could see doing it just, some people just want cordovan wallets, you know, and cordovan, you know, Horbin cordovan has, it's like almost as expensive as alligator these days. You know, it's become the, this, this like really popular product. So I could see us doing that. It's just, yeah, expensive to stock. Sometimes there's issues with getting the leathers, getting the colors that you want. And mm, now there's also other tanneries in Italy and Japan that make cordovan. I've seen examples that I like. It's just, you know, cordovan, it's special in a way, right? If it gets wet, you see the drops on it. So it's just something you need to understand and know that it's going to happen. 
and with a wallet, you know, if you have maybe wet hands, you just wash something, grab something. Okay, do you want the imprints of your wet fingers on your wallet or not? So just something to, to keep in mind. But um, I, I could see us doing that at some point in time. Wasn't the highest priority. Which wallet color is the most versatile? Well, um, you know, I like this color a lot. Is it the most versatile? No, right? Because it's it's very light. The cool thing is over time, it develops a darker patina. and But you have to like that. Not everyone likes leather where you see every nick, every, you know, uh, do you want that? Do you like that, right? I, I personally, I really enjoy that. If, if you don't, then, you know, a leather like this, like the Togo leather where you scratch and, you know, you don't see anything, it's it's, it's much more in line with, with what you'd want. Color-wise, you know, black is, of course, a kind of classic. And you see, we didn't do a contrast stitching here because typically people who opt for a black wallet like that all black simplicity. Um, on all the others, we, we added the contrast stitching. But a medium to dark brown is probably your best bet simply because, you know, you can, you can, this will darken over time. So it can work with something black. It can work with something brown. I would say this is probably a, a burgundy color can also be really popular. And we're still working on some more, you know, colorful options so we can bring back something like this, and maybe a calf leather. You can see here this green, right? I really like this green. Um, not the most versatile, right? If you just want to stand out, it's good. But for example, you know, with this leather, it's it's very similar to this leather. It's it's the same shrink calf, but this one here has a you know a semi aniline dye and has a certain coating that gives a lot of certain properties, like the scratch resistancy. Here, I wanted you know a I, I wanted a leather, and it's, you know, custom made for us that that had a different feel. I wanted it to be a bit softer. I wanted the, the peak to be darker. But, you know, when you hear here, for example, that's one sound. This squeaks a bit too much for my taste. And for a wallet that you have in your pocket, I, I want to prevent any kind of situation where something is squeaky. So we're going to go back and change that leather until we get something that's exactly to our liking. But then we can get exactly the colors that we like and and, and play with them a little bit. Are you planning to add more leather types and colors? Yes. So that's um, which wallet is the most formal, which is the most casual? Yeah, the coat wallet is, is, is the most formal, right? Because it's this kind of you need to wear a jacket in order to, to carry it. That's not going to work in your pocket. And then, you know, the least formal are probably things you know with a zipper um i had one earlier something like this right where it's like kind of no leather um fanny pack zipper style uh, will you make other leather accessories like cigar cases yes we're making lots of other um things so stay tuned um rome wasn't built in a day and we're you know a small business we're not a multi-million dollar company that can just say, hey, we'll drop an entire range of leather goods and invest, you know, $3 million in stock. Um, we, we can't do that. We have to create products, sell them, take the proceeds, you know, develop a new line and, and go forth. And if you look, you know, we're, we're taking stuff seriously. You know, we're doing lots of different prototypes because when we have a product, you know, we want it to be really, really good. And we don't want it to be something where we're like, ooh, that's, you know, uh, now people hate it and they want to return it, and, and th that's a problem. For example, this leather here, you know, just touching it out from the get-go, we, we all loved it. It had this, like, super soft touch, but then we wore it, and what, what ha would happen is, you know, it, it started out being more shiny, and then over time, it got this, like, hazy film over it. We're like, well, that sucks. You don't want this kind of hazy looking leather, right? Even though it feels nice, no. And so we're like, we're not going to use that. So, yeah. So stay tuned. We'll have more stuff coming. Do you have advice for leather wallet care? Mine has cracks on the outside. I bought it at a flea market. Yes, I would say use, no matter what the color is, use a neutral, meaning no color pigments um, in the product. Uh, product. Otherwise, you know, if you use a black, it'll 
sooner or later rub off on your clothes and you know it may or may not come out so you don't want that just make sure it's it's clear polish and use i would say not a hard wax polish but like a softer emulsion it's more fluid i would use something like that in a no pigment color kind of deal um yeah and uh Again, if you just uh, join us now, we're launching our eight card and 10 card wallets today. So this is the big 10 card, eight card wallets. They're really slim, they have double folded edges, they're all leather, um, all high end leather, use two and a half to three times more leather than a regular wallet. And we have a deal where if you buy any of the 8cc or 10cc uh, wallets, you'll get one of our card holders for free. Use the code FREEWALLET125 and you select the wallet and you select the card holder of your choice. Can be the same color, doesn't have to be. You can do something fun, you know, get an orange card holder. This is like, a, you know, yeah do something that you like and this is a very i mean it's a really good deal if you think about it you know it's like you, you get a product you, you spend 255 or and you get a product for 125 for free you know that's like almost 50 percent the value of the product that you pay for you, you get it for free and obviously we can't do this uh all day every day otherwise we go bankrupt so we just offer this deal for the first week so this is valid until april 1st so if you're in the market for a wallet there has never been a better time to buy one um great jacket rafael where is it from this is like an isaiah napoli jacket they call it aqua cashmere which is you know treated with uh this uh yeah forever chemical i think uh, from 3m that will be probably forbidden sooner or later so it's supposed to, you can wear it, you know, and the water kind of pearls off, but it's not good for the environment. So um, not something that will, you know, will be phased out in the future, I'm sure. I bought a new Rose Melange suit. Which color tie is a good combination? Well, you know, sometimes like this kind of brown with a warm tone and maybe if there's element of pink can be, can be a good thing. Maybe a, a burgundy could be good estate sale could you share information about them how do you find estate sales do you visit them often there's like you know a website called estatesales.net in the u.s there's an app and it'll show you if there's a sale in your area now this is something you have to love and you also have to because otherwise if you kind of look at your time and what it's worth and what you get it often time doesn't add up if you love the the thrill of the chase and you're going somewhere you like flea markets and it's a hobby then it doesn't feel like a waste of time you may find good deals but i found that you know i go more to the high-end sales or where i know where i see the photos oh someone is there like oh he was a trial lawyer and he has this large bow tie collection great people don't buy many bow ties and then you can go and buy the whole collection for you know three dollars a bow tie that's great but that happens you know once every decade so yeah i have to figure out if, if if it's worth it for you i personally like it but i haven't been one uh, to one recently it's a time thing you know um where do you get pinhole color shirts for color jewelry such as color pins and color bars i think your best bet is is uh made to measure there's also companies um i think like chester cordite that you know specifically focus on more a vintage appeal um there's another English company I can't think of the name right now um, they they kind of specialize in these vintage things like Darcy clothing and uh, a few others in, in, in Britain particularly that make these off the rack or are you just Google it you know just try to find it that way I'm thinking of buying my first suit mainly for job hunting purposes and I'm thinking of getting a good one that could last me a while what should I look for well you know we did some videos about best blazers and suits so I, I think check that out Otherwise, are there any more leather questions? Because this is more of a leather um, video. And I'm also curious, you know, if you could share, like, what are some leather products that you'd be really interested in? You know, is it a dop kit? Is it a watch case? Is it a pen case? Is it a passport holder? Is it a duffel bag or briefcase? Or, you know, watch straps, belts, 
w whatever it is that you know you want. Um, and yes, on, on the line of belts, we you know we work with the manufacturer and we made these belts and they were all folded edges, but we had lots of issues with them in terms of consistency, you know, making the belt in the in the desired width and the uh, stiffness and everything. So we've actually decided to, to switch to entirely different belt makers and they make nothing but belts and specialize in this. And so, you know, these are the the prototypes here. We did like you know a scorching line here with the, the stitch density that we have and to make a very beautiful product. I know it's all all leather without lining so we'll have some leather belts in the near future and much more colors so that'll be a cool product they'll all work with buckles we'll also have some new buckles that will launch so uh, yeah stay tuned for that otherwise um yeah you know bags like this i think that can oftentimes be very functional in a sense do you have a 13 inch laptop a 14 inch you know 15 or 16 and you want to get something in exactly the size that you want and then you know what's what's the inside like you know is it fabric is it leather is it padded how are the zippers you know is it functionally split up how is the you know are the edges painted or are they folded what's the you know durability what's it what's it like so to speak so we'll We'll be working on stuff like that. But obviously, you know, if you compare the amount of leather, this versus this, you know, obviously this is way more. So it's a more, it's a bigger expense, it's a bigger endeavor. And so for us, you know, it's good to understand what are some leather colors that, you know, sell well? What are the most popular colors? Because I just can't go and say, ooh, you know, just because I love this doesn't mean that's going to be the most popular color. You know, it's, it's, the market is, is always different and you have to see what actually works and then we can go to the larger goods and maybe you know start with those colors first. Otherwise and you'll see that you know some companies they'll just have you know one color. You know they have one brown or one black and they do that because of the stocking cost not because they like that one color. It's really hard to stock you know multiple other goods in multiple colors. Um, is there a safe way of disinfecting leather goods? You know, frankly, I've never thought about that. I'd be careful with using, you know, my 70% rubbing alcohol on it because depending on the leather finish, it may take it off. Um, I, I don't know. I've never felt the need to, to, to deal with that. So honestly, I, I couldn't tell you that. I have to look it up. Um, I received maroon leather gloves for my birthday. Can you talk a bit about how to care for gloves and the like? Um, gloves is kind of a special leather because, you know, for gloves, you want a leather that is extremely soft and stretchy. We sell gloves, you know, like peccary leather. It's super soft. You know, you, you want it to kind of, as you move your hand, to be super, yeah, soft and, and given. You don't want to compromise that in any way. I once, you know, lost a peccary glove in a puddle, so it stayed there overnight, and then when I dried it, and afterwards, it was really hard, but all I had to do was just put it back on, you know, wear it a few times, kind of break it in, and it, it softened up again. So, um, I, again, it depends a bit on, on what the letter is like. Probably it's going to be an aniline dyed letter that's super soft. I'd say, you know, because if you have your hands on stuff and, and you rub, you'll see darkening areas, and that's normal. And you get a patina, and people like that. Um, I would uh, advise if you use a product, use something that is clear in color. Don't use a maroon product, because as you touch things, it may rub off, and that's not something that you, that you want. Generally, you don't have to overdo it with gloves. I own lots of gloves. I never used any leather products on them yet because there was simply no need. If they get dirty, I wash them, you know, in like warm water, hand wash them, not machine wash, um, with, a, you know, gentle soap or baby shampoo. And then I kind of don't wring them. I kind of use cotton towels, pat them dry, and then I let them air dry. Um, not on a hanger because you, you see the lines in the flat area with a towel underneath not in a radiator. Um, how often do you wear double-breasted suits? I don't know, that's an old leather question here. 
but I think we also have hit our one hour mark. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for asking questions. We tried a different time today. I think it, normally we've done it like m Friday at noon our time. This was Monday at 3 p.m. our time. So please let us know if you like that, if you thought it was good or if you'd like a later time or different day of the week. Be curious to learn. Again, if you want one of our eight card wallets and 10 card wallets today um, until April 1st, you get a free four uh, credit card card holder um, for free with the code free wallet 125. Just go to our section, select the wallets that you like, both the eight card wallet, 10 card, and the four card. You can choose the color, type in the code free wallet 125, and you'll basically get this card holder wallet for free. Um, yeah, stay tuned for more cool stuff. Um, 2024 uh, will be an exciting year for us in terms of product launches. You'll see a lot more coming from us. We're working hard. We appreciate your feedback and uh, your support. Thank you. And